Hey everyone, it's time to have a look at this v-scoring situation with my new PCBs. So these are my Revision 1 ESP32 boards. Back then I called them my Nightlight boards, which they're really not anymore. They're just a development board. And these are my new ones. So let's crack this open and find out what's inside. And if you can hear some eh, eh, eh in the background, that's my printer going. So much for silent mode, hey? Okay. So, let's firstly zoom in and have a look at the panelization. So firstly, it's nice that they actually got the serial number on the outside of the panel, rather than having it on the board. As you may be able to read, it's now called the ESP32 Dev Board. LisbettaMaker.com revision 2018-2 Oh, the comms gone underneath the uh, open source hardware logo. Whoops. And on the back, I've put a bit of a logo and wow, all the text spacing's completely changed. Make something unexpected. I'm putting make something unexpected on my boards now and I'm sticking a bit of a part of a logo there as well. And I've got the ESP32 development board on both sides. Cool. So these have been panelized. And I, I used the panelizing service where I just upload the one set of Gerbers and I say to JLC PCB, I want you to do this by this. And as long as you make it fit within their 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters boundary, you can do as many as you want. So in this case, I was able to get three across, but only one vertically, which is fine. But it gave me 30 boards instead of 10 for the same price, which is pretty cool. But what I wanted to see was, firstly, how easy it is to break them apart, and secondly, how much space did they allow between the boards for the v-scoring, because it looks to me like they didn't leave enough space, maybe, and the v-scoring has got really close to the edge of the board. So we're going to break one off. I've never done this before. I've never even seen a board with v-scoring before. I don't know if I can do it with my fingers or not, or if I need pliers. I'm just going to pull the camera back a little bit so you can see what damage I do if I do any at all. Um, I guess maybe I should just try taking one off first. Oh, I've got fiduciaries on there. Interesting. They obviously set that up themselves. So let's see if we can break one board. Okay, that actually comes apart fairly easily. Although it doesn't give you a very nice edge. As you can probably see here, we've got a nice smooth clean edge. And now we have a bit of a, a funky not nice edge. Now we can clean that off with some sandpaper or a bit of a knife I guess. But what I want to see is if we take this off completely did we also lose the curves? Maybe, maybe. Right, so we did have some nice curves on our board before around the bottom Milling, but and we've kind of lost some of that. It feels kind of square, not very smooth. It could just be the because of the roughness from the edge. Okay, so but the big question is, have we actually lost anything of our width because of it? And it turns out we haven't. Interesting. I did actually make the board a fraction taller. It's a very small amount, so that's right. But we haven't actually lost any width. How do I know? Well, I'm just holding next to it. It's interesting. It looked to me like it was eating in to the space, but maybe it didn't. Maybe they left enough space for the rescore. So I don't know what I need to use to clean it off. I'm going to have to do some research online to find out. As I said, this is the first time for me as well. So it's, you know, obviously nowhere near as smooth and as nice. This is like super smooth. But that's okay. I mean, ultimately the board's going to go inside something. So let's have a look at some of the changes I made on this board while we're at it. Let's get closer again. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. So some of the first things you'll notice is the labels are bigger across the pins. You can actually read them now, which is very cool because you couldn't before, but they're about 30% bigger. So the labels on the pins are 30% bigger, which is great. I also stuck a big whopping 5 volt DC message for where the 2.1mm uh, jack goes. 
but once again it looks like the text has gone off the edge so I'm having a problem with my text size and positioning with JLC PCB these were actually set in my Eagle files to be vector and you can see they've got that vector look but they didn't position properly that's a bit of a shame okay let's turn them over what I've also done now is I've put all of the the pins on the back as well which I didn't have before before I only marked the SPI and the I squared C ones because on the front they say what they are but on the back I wanted the, the reference numbers but now I've got all of the numbers for the pins at the back and I also mark SDA, SCL, MISO, MOSI and CLOCK so there's a lot more information on the board now makes it much more useful and I also marked the the 5 volt and the ground on that side I'm using a different USB header I'm using the same one now that I'm using on my Reflow Master which is the SparkFun USB header instead of the Adafruit so there's less holes on the back as you can see there was a lot more holes and solder pads on the back which I don't have now which is nice so they've had the the change of the circuitry on this side over here to make sure that there's no problem with the 5 volts going in and it being unfiltered so that's great it's also got a rearranging of spaced out these caps and resistors a bit more vertically as you can see maybe compared to here the pads were just too close it was very hard to place them especially with the solder paste getting really close I've moved an LED across and I've also added one more pin to the header on the side and I've exposed pin 13 which I didn't have before so pin 13 still got an LED but it's now actually exposed on the board which is cool so now I've got an even number of pins on the left and the right so that's my ESP32 development board. It doesn't have LiPo charging because it's not something that I need this to have. All of the projects that I want to use this for are going to have 2.1 millimeter power input and they don't require a battery. And I wanted the header on there so I didn't have to do external wiring to headers. So that's what that was designed for. There are plenty of other boards out there that have LiPo if you need a, a development board that's got USB and LiPo on it. There we go. So I've got stacks of these. <laughs> 30 of them. Which is very cool. Because that's more than I'm ever going to need. And it's way more than I've actually got ESP32s for. I kept the FTDI chip on here. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel with these particular boards and change too much. I already knew that the board worked really well when I'm not blowing it up. So I just wanted to keep all the stuff the same, and I've got a bunch of these FTDI chips I need to get rid of anyway. Or not get rid of, but I need to use up, otherwise they're just going to sit in a drawer forever. So that's it, they're my ESP32. As you can see with the panelizing, it's quite cool. I'm just going to move out just a fraction. So they've panelized it, they've got space on top where they, they need to obviously run it through the machine, and that's what they grip it with, and the fiduciaries that they use for registration. But with the stencil, like I mentioned in my jackpot video, out of the way, I've just got the single layout for my stencil. I didn't do a panelized stencil because I didn't particularly want to make three boards at a time and I didn't want to try to stencil it only one section of the stencil. It just becomes too hard. I'm only ever going to build these boards one at a time. I've got plenty of boards that I can stick on Tindy if people want some boards. I don't know if I'm going to actually populate them and sell them as development boards on Tindy. I might. I guess if there's a need for it, I can always build them as I'm going. But yeah, wow, that's a lot of boards. That's pretty cool. So I'm super excited about the, the panelizing. It seems to be good. I've got a, quite a few boards to check still. But that's a thumbs up for me so far from JLC PCB panelizing. Yay. Okay, thanks for watching. Welcome to all my new subs. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. It makes a, a huge difference to me and my channel if you actually subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click the alarm bell so you're notified when I've got new videos coming out. And until next time, bye.